Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do that. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. Times Pickle Moon. Dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trapping found at the crime scenes are fake a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution, and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. St. George books could use some serious renovation, but Gabriel likes to think that the place has character. The books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal, recent fiction by the babies. In other words, not written by Gabriel. The books on the desk all need repair work. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. Grace keeps her art supplies here. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Cute gargoyle, eh? So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Dana called. And, uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Carson. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you the most. 
She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop lying and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel. Those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in a new voodoo book? A writer has said the population is his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it. Until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop, museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. Tell me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go aboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it and I thought, well, spending a few months here would clear my head. Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. I don't even remember Japan myself. I was the when it came to the States. Just tell me anything at all. I've been studying Tai Chi for 10 years. It's a very spiritual discipline. I'm sure discipline of any sort isn't something that would appeal to you, Gabriel. Just tell me anything at all. My folks want me to get married to a boy back east. Mark Kobayashi. His parents are traditional Japanese too. I might eventually, but right now... Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Sit yourself.
Gabriel looks at the cash register, checking for cobweb. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the tape, or in the case of St. George Book, the missed tape. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. The cash register contains about $20 in small bills and change. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. Gabriel's bedroom is also his office, studio, and library. A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. Gabriel, shut the refrigerator please, I can smell it from here. Women. Jeans and t-shirts. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? It's Gabriel's bathroom. I really got to get around to cleaning up in there. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. Gabriel's robe hangs on the wall. It's a bit hot for it in June, though. No thanks. I don't have time to relax. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. It's Gabriel's bed, unmade as usual. It's no use. I can't sleep. The carpet was grand. She gave it to Gabriel to tear the place up. Gabriel's desk has been gathering dust since his last novel. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. Gabriel likes a subdued lighting effect in his studio. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. The desk phone is cheap, but functional. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. A small trunk serves as a table for the radio. Gabriel's mini stereo isn't exactly high fidelity. Then again, neither is he. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. Writer's Block There's a pair of tweezers on the counter. Grace uses them for book repair work. 
The magnifying glass is a handy item for reading old manuscripts or the fine print on the release. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate ship. No problem. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. What can I... This... Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. The top shelf contains a set of German books that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen, drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Ziele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Heurigen Äthers, gespelten Asunen, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy though. Who's the author? Hans Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppet. The top shelf contains books on animals including snakes and other reptiles. Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that many of the legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Gabriel looks at the cash register, checking for cobwebs. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the tape. Or, in the case of St. George's books, the mistake. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. Under the window are reference books. Dictionaries, foreign language dictionaries, quotation books, and others. Gabriel borrows them often when he's writing. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. Spiel means game. Interesting. Himmel means heaven. Uh-huh. Dry means three. Possessing means possessed. That's handy to know. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know who's being insulted if I called him Drachen Brea. Dramatic, isn't it? Gabriel didn't eat for three weeks after splurging on that food. He has a thing for black leather.
I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Don't hurry back on my account. Stop by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. That's my grand. Adorable as always. You're such a tease. Gabriel grew up in this room. Just being here make him feel safe. And after about five minutes, Flaster folk. On the wall are portraits of Gran and Gramps when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking genes. The sofa has a worn blue chintz pattern that Gabriel remembers fondly. She whipped through that stuff like there was no tomorrow. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. Grandmother Knight rarely uses the fireplace these days. Too much of a hassle to clean. How you been, Grand? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you. I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Graham. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about the fall you met, Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born with that right. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. Peas, corn, cotton. All kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then. A big fella named Red Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fire and brimstone antics, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for ma'am, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather, and I never will. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Tell me about our family. 
Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me something about Granddad. Your Granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I tell you what, he hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed. Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your Granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me something about Granddad. Did you know that your Granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most... Beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Tell me something about Granddad. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you. You can't be gone, Henry. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that car. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. He couldn't do it. Just to die and disturb another puppy, you know. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course. But I also think she liked the finer family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family too? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from a great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Tell me about my mother. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. What can you tell me about? Voodoo. Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know 
anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time. You don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. What do you know about the food in the Oh, dear. Nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gwen. Be careful of the dust. That must have been the year Granddaddy caught Santa on the roof. Grandma's attic is a storehouse of forgotten treasures and useless junk. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. From Grand Virginia Woolf period. It's an old metal tub full of dust and cobwebs. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can remember. A skylight lets welcome sunlight into the attic. That box of knickknacks has been up there for at least five years. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketchbook and charcoal pencil. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook. The way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. The old velvet curtains hung in the parlor before Grand lightened up the place. The old trunk looks like it's gone to hell and back. An elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin, is among the discarded treasures of the island. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. A key winds the clock's mechanism. There's an interesting design in the base of the clock. A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. The face of the clock is hand-painted. The hands do not appear to have any mechanical function other than to move. probably at least 50 years old, shows two young men standing with an older man outside the castle. I wonder who they are. It's an old letter on fancy paper. The old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men, 
that Gabriel has not identified. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quilted bold strokes and underlining. Load off, huh? Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? 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 How are Gabriel? I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Well, Granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Come on. Hmm. Thanks, Grant. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel. Where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father. But, I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America. But he didn't want to talk about it never even told me about his name change. I found out one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. Didn't granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse, thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, someplace he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I told you all I know about your granddad's past. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Gabriel is standing in the lobby of his friend Mosley's precinct. It smells like a cross between a hospital and brewery. A counter separates the front lobby from an office area. 
the desk sergeant looked like a poster boy for heart disease. Thirty extra pounds between the armpits and the belt and a complexion of consistency of grey oak. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. There's a photocopy machine in the office area. A uniformed officer of the New Orleans Police Department. She's not bad. Hey, nice precinct. Think so? That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Hey, it's a beignet guy. Great, I'm starved. Stay put, you. Hey, grab me three, would ya? Sure. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the death sergeant Freck Wine. Rick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out of the crime scene. Sorry. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos and are probably already there. Come on, you can tell me where the crime scene is. Look, I know the paper's got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder then? Hey, I didn't say that. You read all about it in the papers tomorrow, I'm sure. Please tell me where the crime scene is. Look, buddy, you keep it up, and there'll be a crime scene right here. I was supposed to pick up some photos from a detective mostly at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. What can you tell me about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. What can you tell me about Norway? If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. Have you ever heard of a shot in Jaeger? Can't say that I have, but it sounds dirty. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. The envelope from Mosley is a plain manila one. It feels pretty light. The envelope has Gabriel's name written on it. Miss Bell. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds who photograph?
one of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of the victim. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. A wide walk provides a pathway around the square. Jackson Square is a good place to rest while exploring the French Quarter and a great place to be entertained by local performers. Corner request assistance A blues band entertains on the lawn. Now that's music. A police officer is either off-duty or patrolling the park, or both. A cop has driven his motorcycle into the park. Something Gabriel would probably never get away with. On the motorcycle is a police radio. Anyone seen Joe? Good day, officer. Yeah, you too. Keep moving. Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy. I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. Homicide team attention. That jazz band is pretty good. Of course, most jazz band in New Orleans are. A Cajun band, inventive as always with their instruments, is having a good old time on the lawn. Funny how catchy that toe tapping can be. You white-faced geek! You wanna eat my fist? A bronze statue of Andrew Jackson marks the center of Jackson Square. It's one of those mines. Oh boy. Picking on me. I'll tell my dad. A lone drummer beats out a haunting rhythm on a large African drum. Well, I never leave me alone, you, you, you man. Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, 
mister. You want some of this? Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Drive north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. Damn, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. Uh, hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 91. Interesting. Ma'am. Hey you, get away from that bike. Sorry. The crime scene team is still at the site. Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Hey, mostly. Huh? You weird, I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book. But don't tell anyone I ain't seen this, huh? It's another one. As you can see, same M.O. and no freaking clues. Still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're freaking ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports of nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, man. We've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. Woo, I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly again. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? Well, Lake's a popular place for country club. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, if nobody ever sees or hears nothing, I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the musk in the water, officer Joe. I'll be back in the station. Stop by if you want to go with Kate some more. Christian Banks, never be cleaned again. 
Gabriel on the sand and clay shore of Lake Pontypridd. At the site where some are bastard got to see who the food murderer really The site is now deserted. Lake Pontypridd is impressive. It measures 24 miles across and stretches as far as the eye can see. But you wouldn't want to swim in it. There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand. But if there is a pattern, it's near. There's only one small area that's clearly defined. Hmm, let me try to get this down. It's extremely big, bloody sand. Lake Shore Drive runs round the entire lake. This is a particularly lonely stretch, but it's still a public road. It's very large grass. It's very large grass. There are marks in the grass, as though some heavy wire object had been set there. With magnification, the marks in the grass are clearer. The marks are actually deep indentations in a regular mesh pattern. Something small and iridescent is barely visible among the indentations. It looks like a scale of some sort. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what can. The banks of Lake Pontchartrain are rich with clay deposits. Hmm, is that clay? Yuck! Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Come on back. Mostly. Night, I had a feeling you'd show up. Mosley's office looks a lot like his room at college. Mosley was one of those beefy guys in his room. Now he's getting dumpy. The bag in his front coat pocket is set off particularly well by the gold polyester of the jacket. Art prints of the mall variety. Mosley's bookcase holds old magazines and binders. An intercom. How high tech. 
police department memos, and other didactic blurbs. A microwave. If Gabriel knows Mosley, it's used exclusively for frozen corn dogs. Nice polyester. Look like something Mosley keeps around for formerly. So, how's it hanging, bud? Lousy. I hate crime scenes. People are sick, but you know that night? I'm starting to get that impression. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? How do you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched. I don't see why I can't be the chief of police in New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. Chief. Yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know, put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? A oh, real funny night. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? Well, you know Andy left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play monkey in the middle? <laughs> we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Ms. McKelly? You'd act like you were going to toss her an eraser or something. Then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grand's, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch your soap. Yep. And it was a great way to pick up women in the library hall. Oh, those were the days. Just tell me anything at all. You know, my doctor told me I've got a little family ulcer starting. I wish this case had end so I'd get some rest, Miss Jane. Oh, nothing. Never mind. It's your dime. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all fake. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know, I have some experts. It's intimidation tactics, that's all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? A lot. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scene. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged. Problem, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's madness. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the Voodoo Murders case. Now, the first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. was the same in each murder. Lake Ponchar Train was the seventh. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints, a few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur? Describe the crime scenes. Now there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. 
around where the body was killed, we find marks of flour and blood. There are traces of wax and candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles in the laboratory. Also blood and feathers of chickens. Also goat's blood. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision. Literally scared to death. The knife user consists of a long, narrow, wavy edge knife. Probably a ritualistic bag. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard of disturbance. It's damn weird. Like they just don't want people to see, and so nobody sees nothing. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out of town. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing, never mind. Sure, no problem. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It's going. Can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. Weird. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? You're as filled in as me. Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those little marks around them. We got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Frank. Tell her I said you'd see the file. Have you ever called a hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. Excuse me, officer. Yes? So... What's it like being a police woman? The glamour never ceases. Excuse me, officer. Yes? You know, that uniform looks great on me. Uh-huh. Is that a compliment? Or are you asking me to borrow my dress? It's a compliment. Well, you just never know around here. Thanks, but I'm not. Excuse me, officer. Yes? Could you get me some coffee? Are you speaking to me? Why, yes. Wow. Deja leave it to Beaver. I'm the police photographer, sir. You might be able to find someone around here dumb enough to get coffee for you. Guess what? It won't be me. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, officer. Yes? Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The voodoo murders file? Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if he said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. It's the official police file, containing the partial patterns from the voodoo murders. The folder is marked with the warning. Not to leave the police station. The 
police file contains partial patterns from the first six voodoo murders. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. You been feeling okay lately? You look like hell. Me? Ah, uh, you know, I can't sleep at night what with thinking about the case and thinking about Annie. I can relate. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. Got any more ideas for photos for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course you like to try to tell me down on my masculinity. Well, okay. I'll call the police photographer. Franks, come here a minute, would you? Bring your camera. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. We'll make it a good one, no, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, Jincy. Was there anything else, Matt? How about one of me and Officer Frank? Gee, I don't know. Frank? Uh, um... <laughs> Just kidding, Frank. You want to get me fired for sexual harassment night? Well... Yeah, ha, ha. Now, is there anything else, or can I let this lady go back to her dad? Hold up on a sec while I go check my hair. God, I make it fast. Let me see that file again. Just want to check this machine here. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would you? Okay, ready. Thanks, huh? Let me know when you got it developed. Uh, focus, that is. Yeah, sure. Played any b-ball lately? Does it look like it? I'm so out of shape, I'd probably have a coronary just looking at a ball. I'm out of it too. We should play something. Get back into shape. Man, I'd love to, Matt. I'll let you know if things ever settle down. I'm gonna hit the road. Later, Matt.
Hi. Huh? The Dixieland drugstore is crammed from top to bottom with strange merchandise. Some or all of which seem to be related to the practice of voodoo. The sign says, Special Saint Jean Lanyapi. Free bottle of lover come back to me oil or master gambling oil with every purchase over fifty dollars. Lanyapi. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. Small bags made of felt and flannel hang from the ceiling. Those are green green. They're for the magic. No guarantees, though, you know. Ropes of garlic hanging from the ceiling. I'll know where to come if I ever have a vampire problem. The glass jars contain a number of things Gabriel can't identify. And wouldn't want to. It's a mannequin wearing a crocodile mask. The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. In this case are super concentrated fixing oils and packages of pins. The poster reads, Power will be yours when you use Papa Legba's power drawing incense and master power oil. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelves, each impaled with a single silver pin. The dust on those boxes is older than Gabriel. Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drugstore and I own it, me. Name's Walker. Really well. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want, I'll answer what I want. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night in the year. What goes on exactly? Um, uh, I couldn't say. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Um, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons and boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. Tell me about yourself. How did you get into this kind of business? Why should I discuss my business with you, man? Would you mind taking a look at this photograph? Cabri Sancor. Cabri Sancor? What does that mean? Nothing. I didn't say anything like that. You heard me wrong, man. Can you tell me anything about these murders? Does any of this voodoo stuff around the body look familiar to you? Don't you come in here asking me about this stuff, yeah? 20 years I run a respectable curio shop in the first quarter. That don't mean I know about dead bodies and all this just Forget it, man.
I knew you'd miss me. So I came back. Oh, joy. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you know what Capri Saint-Gaul means? Hmm. No. Sounds French, though. Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean real snakes. You know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them in the book. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... It's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay? Good morning. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Oh. So have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh. It always does that. Never mind. Ha uh, ha. Uh. Did you dream about the fire and the hang guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Malia Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is... Hey! Far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West England. That's a garden district, a state city. That's all I wanted to know. And yes, my dear, Malia Getty is the most dangerous-looking diversion I've ever seen. Ouch! Oi, men.
times pick are you? Dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crimes is fake. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called La Plaza Dama, under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hanging, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yes. Of course, these days it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instinct. I feel a dark star rising, all right. I'll be back later. Don't hurry back on my account. There's a temperature gauge on the wall near Mosley's office. The security cage has been removed by the electrician. The electrician has left his tools behind. He must plan on returning. It's you, God help me. It's hot. Dang, the air conditioning must be on the blink. Are you hot? Man, I'm hot. Mosley's coat is on the chair. His badge is in the front coat pocket. Anything else new? Just work. Sorry I don't have more time to chat. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Man, you've always been caffeine at it. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So, I'm desperate. It's coming. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? <laughs> Alright, I'll go now. Don't touch anything. I think I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. <laughs> just drink this. Thanks. Tons. I mean it.
and artists is taking advantage of the fine weather. Nice drawing of the cathedral. Thanks. It's really precise. Well, I'm an architectural student, actually. It's good practice. Those drawing tools are amazing. Yeah, they're great for laying lines, angles, circles, anything geometric. It's pretty meticulous, but I prefer it to freehand. Can you draw anything with those tools? They're great for ordered, complex forms and patterns, but they won't help me do Monet. Do you mind if I watch you? Be my guest. The juggler looks like a beginner practicing the act. Say, do you think there's anything you can do with these patterns? Uh, I'm kind of busy and I don't normally do requests. Oh, okay. Hey, come back here. Hey! Oh, unbelievable. Rotten luck! How's it going? Well, life sucks. I just lost two days worth of work. What you working on now? Just starting another drawing of the cathedral. Gabriel can't reach the drawing from where he is. A small boy is tap dancing enthusiastically for a lucky dog vendor. The vendor ignores him. The lucky dog vendor has him held buried in a paperback novel. Gabriel knows that it is not a big surprise. One You dance pretty well for a kid. Give me some money then. I don't have any. What the view, mister? Do you do requests? Got any money? No. Some to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. Could I get a lucky dog, please? Not now, I'm better. An unambitious person? In the 90s? <laughs> Amazing. Hello, are you selling lucky dogs or not? Gabriel entirely. I have this gift certificate. I'm bad. It's good for 20 bucks in St. George's Books, the finest bookstore in your home. gift certificate with you, if you'll give me a lucky dog. A lucky dog? 
one and down again. Sure, here you go. The lucky dog is plump and juicy. You wouldn't like to ride a dog, by the chance. Thanks, mister. If you got any special requests, let me know. You mentioned something about special requests. Yeah, you got one? Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. There's something in there I can't quite reach. Come on. Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Yep. See ya. It's a technical drawing of Saint Louis Cathedral. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing? How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, huh? Say, do you think there's anything you can do with these patterns? What do you need? Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. Pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. What is this from, anyway? You'd never believe me. Okie dokie. Well, there's... Hmm. I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these... I'll see what I can do. I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. The Garden District is famous for its elaborate old plantation homes and mansions. This particular mansion is impeccably green. The huge trees bear beards of Spanish moss. Potted roses mark the entrance to the house. The windows are made of thick, heavy glass. The only thing Gabriel can see inside is even thicker drapery. The front door of the Getty Mansion looks unusually solid and heavy. May I help you? I'd like to see Malia get it, please. I'm sorry, but unless you have an appointment or official business, I cannot announce you. I do have official business. Really? Please tell me the nature of your business.
My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. Really? How interesting. Wait here. I'll inform Miss Giddy. Miss Giddy will see you. Right this way. Miss Giddy will be down shortly. Thank you. What can I do for you, Detective? Undoubtedly proof that there is a Harvard Flat, Holmes, Virgin. Eh? Maybe Molly wouldn't be impressed by a sign copy of one of his little novels. Nice statue, I like. Thank you. It's The Rebellious Slave by Michelangelo. Modern art? More or less. It's a Picasso. Beautiful women. They must be relatives. They are. Mmm. Romantic. I like firelight, Detective. Ming Dynasty, perhaps? This is quite a place. Thank you. It's been in the family a long time. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Gill? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I don't really have a choice. What do you want to know, Detective? What kind of things interest you? I don't have a lot of free time, but I do appreciate the arts. Opera, symphony, ballet, fine art. If you look around, you'll see that we collect African art, for example. Yes, it's very beautiful. It is, Detective. It means a great deal to me. Do you have a career? career. Being the head of the Getty family is a 24-hour-a-day job. We have many holdings and many responsibilities, financial and otherwise. The management of our business affairs and properties leaves me with time for little else. Poor little rich girl? Believe it or not, Detective, wealth does have its price. Tell me about your family. The Gettys? We are a very private family. How many people are there in your family? Well, my mother just passed away. I am sorry. So am I. She was a magnificent woman. We were very close. I was an only child. And your father? I never knew him. It's hard to believe that any man would leave a woman like you. Or like your mother must have been. He did not leave, Detective. But that's really none of your concern. I'm sorry. Go on. There are, of course, other Gettys in the city. I have a large, extended family. I see. Do you have a husband? A boyfriend? I'm very independent, Detective. The women in my family have always preferred it that way. So, you've never been married? No, and I never will be. What about children? Yes, that is likely. Someday. I'd like to hear just about anything. I do a lot of charity work around the city, primarily in the prison and reform system. I'm not a professional sociologist, but it does interest me. I'd like to hear just about anything. I have a business degree from Vanderbilt. I wanted to study psychology, but my family's interests came first. Oh? Why not something like law? Surely that would have been an asset to the family. Law? Please, I do have some morals, Detective. I'd like to hear just about anything. For the record, I'm 28, Detective. I 
wouldn't know where to begin. As you wish, Detective. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Why would you want to know about that, Detective? It's rather silly, isn't it? There's nothing silly about the voodoo murders. But that voodoo is fake. That's what I've read in the papers. That's what the papers say, all right. But you're not convinced? No, frankly, I'm not. The police department isn't known for its imagination. Oh. Well, I can see that your imagination is considerable. Are you sure you can't tell me anything about voodoo? I really don't know much about it. Isn't there some place in town that you can find out about that sort of thing? A museum or something? I believe there is a museum. Then maybe you should check there. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I, Detective. Tell me about your life in New Orleans. The Getty family came to New Orleans in 1800. We worked very hard to get where we are. On the other hand, we've done a lot for this community. I can believe that. You're doing a lot for me right now. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm afraid I quite abhor them. What can you tell me about St. John's? I believe it's some sort of local holiday, but I don't know much about it. Do you have any idea what Capri saint gaulle means? No, I don't. What does it mean, Detective? That's confidential information, ma'am. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with that, Detective. Can you tell me anything about what happened out of the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake, and I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Can you tell me anything about what happened out of the lake? I wish I... Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that. Thank you, Detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant to this getting. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Ms. Getty. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book. And I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I, I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear, I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Not a good way. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit.
Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Nine, and I'll probably take you up on that. The historical Voodoo Museum is brimming with items authentic and original. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. On the table is a small coffin. So small, in fact, that it would only fit an infant. Charming. He's got more hair than Mosley. Reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. An official voodoo wish and stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card said. Funny, I say the same thing to women. The back wall displays various voodoo items, such as an anatomically correct voodoo doll with pins strategically placed. Now, why does that remind me of Grace? A street drummer has set it outside the museum. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. A striking portrait of a turban woman is on the back wall. Gabriel wonders who she might be. This is quite a place you have here. Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. Could I ask you some questions? That is why I am here. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes. If you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life, and I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us say that I cut my teeth on it, Mr. I. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then, let us discuss something else. Do you know Malia Getty? Should I? But she referred me to your museum. Many have read about our museum in the newspapers, Mr. Knight. That's a good point. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city? Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight, and will go on from there at your property. Sounds good. As you may know, Voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. 
prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather, giving no chance for Voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. So, how did Voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather. The Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, sadly, if only in the form of a communal hall. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou Saint John and the shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The early voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical voodoo. By 1817, the voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slaveholders. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoon and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dancers right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses, but from about 1830 a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled Voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me more about the historic I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. What do you know about the Voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper? I know that they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or Greek. That kind of practice is actually called voodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city, and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and they are bringing their religion, are attracted to it because they think it is a son. I, personally, am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo. But, it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. Tell me more about current voodoo. There are many voodoo ends in New Orleans. They often do business selling grigri, telling fortunes, providing luck, and occasionally misfortune. Perhaps you would like to meet a voodoo end. We refer those who seek a deeper experience with voodoo to a local practitioner. Magentia Voodoo. Sure, I'd love to meet her. She lives on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. I will call her and tell her you might stop by. Great, thanks.
Tell me more about the current voodoo. You have tapped my resources. My expertise is really historical. Perhaps this moonbeam can be of further help. Is there anything else I should know about voodoo? Not if your interest is primarily in voodoo. Voodoo is of interest to those who study rural folk traditions, but it will not aid you in understanding the true voodoo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to that mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the Widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooans in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight, however she achieved it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a dead snake, danced with it. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously, very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money. That is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of Hugo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when the widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Marie's encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reigning a long time by then. After the death of the widow Paris, other voodoo queens served us. And by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any running this way? No. But the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I have not. How'd it go? Walk carefully out there, Mr. Knight.
San Luis Cemetery, number one, is one of the most historic and beautiful places in the French Quarter. A marble snake. Now that's cheerful. I'm sorry to bother you. What you need, boy? How's business today? About like every day. It's what you call a seller's market. Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa. Bought here by slaves. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't really care to talk about it. I don't do it in the What do you know about the voodoo murders? Ain't it just awful them finding those bodies with voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody trying to cover their tracks is all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I told you all I know about that. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Seems like everybody want to visit New Orleans at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery too. I see tourists in here every day of the year. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them ain't pointing this course. Do you know anything about snakes? I don't mind snakes myself. Lots of folks are afraid of them. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Why, St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of Buddha. Sometimes we get some weird goings on in that cemetery on that night. More often, a few nights in the boat. People taking grave dirt, bones, and moat. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> yep. Don't know what they do with them. They can't be ready. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Gaulle means? No, no. Can't say that I do. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis number one. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, cause, but a big part of my job, too, is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for them. Sometimes they so grief-bound, they don't know what they're doing. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins would float right out of their graves. <laughs> Them dead would go float right down into the crawl. <laughs> Cause if it was Mardi Gras, nobody'd even notice. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery number one. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War, and back further, too. Take a look around, you see. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery on the wall. Just look around, just look around. You get the feel of the place. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Jo, Jo, she was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. A powerful voodoo queen. Powerful sources. Believers still come to her too. They write secret marks on the walls, even off the women. Then there's the tools. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from the Voodoo Museum, he's here at least once today. But Marie Laveau's tomb ain't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. You said there were other marked tombs? <laughs> yep. I seen bull hearts left on tombs and a nest of vulture feathers. Plates of peas and corn green. 
animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this at one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. What other tombs get marked? Can you show me? No, 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 I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the family, and rightly so. Don't know how that sort of thing gets started. Why folks come to start leaving stuff at that one spot. But it happens all the same. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau. Voodoo queen of New Orleans. Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. The marks are reddish in color and reminds Gabriel of Cross. They look like they've been here a few days at least. Food, trinkets and more unsettling things have been left at Marie Laveau's tomb as offerings from believers. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick. Undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers. I want a copy of these strange marks. A stone angel stands silently before a tomb. This old tomb is in a sorry state of disrepair. There's probably no one left in the family to maintain it. An angel with a cross stands guard over one of the tombs. New Orleans is famous for its above-ground tombs. The high water table prevents bodies from being interred underground. The name Ross is inscribed on this old tomb. Vases seem to be a favorite decoration for the dead. Welcome, Seeker. You must be the one Dr. John called me about. I guess so. My name is... Wait. Gabriel Knight. <laughs> You're too quick for me. Actually, Dr. John told me you have come to the right place now. Tell me how I can... My gentle moonbeam is wrapped in gauze and silk. She looks vaguely mysterious and mysteriously vague. A large crystal ball is prominently displayed. A small draped table displays a crystal ball. The mask is made of carved wood and looks African. A large sluggish snake rests on the floor of the fancy bird cave. Apparently, Magenta is not a fastidious housekeeper. A shed skin shares the cage with its original owner. It's a large cluster of quartz crystals. The shelf holds a variety of unusual objects 
the kind of thing Gabriel refers to as junk. Dr. John tells me you're a leading practitioner at some point. I am a good Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, Seeker. What can you tell me about voodoo? My practice is mainly selling charms and potions with magic power, such as Grigory and voodoo oils. You know, everything from unrequited love to wandering spouses to winning a lawsuit. But my spells and charms are powerful, and they work. What do you know? About the voodoo murders. Well, that has nothing to do with me and my clientele, but I can tell you that you should stay as far from it as possible. There is badness there. Very bad. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is the center of voodoo practice in the United States. Do you have any idea what Caprice saint Gaon means? Uh, no. No, I don't. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? It is the greatest night of the voodoo year. There is always a traditional conclave on St. John's Eve. Most of our voodoo churches these days hold functions in the church hall. But in the old days, they had ceremonies out in the wild, and they wore animal masks, and had a huge bonfire and dancing. I used to go when I was in prince, sometimes in the swamp, you know, Bayou St. John, sometimes the lake, Lake Port Chartres. Tell me about the animal masks. I saw them used once or twice when I was younger, but you don't see them much anymore. They are too... close. Too close to what? Just bad karma. What's the significance of St. John's? Special ceremonies are performed, and the lower come to ride the faithful. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, yes. She was the first of the great Guru Queen. Tell me about yourself. Yes? What would you like to hear? How'd you get into this business? I trained in the voodoo arts for many years with the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Who's she? You have never heard of her? For shame! I can see you know little of the world of magic. I'm beginning to get that impression, yes. What kind of people come to see you? Seekers after the truth, such as yourself. Do you do anything else? I am a voodoo yen, and that is plenty. It takes much spiritual effort. How many voodoo yens are there? No one knows exactly. Many practice in secret. There are probably hundreds. But of course the level and the power of the voodoo yens differ greatly, depending on their training and natural gifts. Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in New Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. Tell me anything at all. I began studying voodoo more than 20 years ago. I am well versed in the magic law. I can't think of anything. Very well. Give me an example of a cri cri. All right. Here's an old one. Take a lodestone and some brimstone to a crossroads at midnight. Light the brimstone with a match. And a spirit will come and give you advice in gambling. Do you know anything about the same? You mean like my beloved Grimwald? She's a python, you know. Quite deadly in the wrong hand. I was trained by one of the great voodoo queens to learn how to hypnotize and handle snakes. 
Uh, about Grimwa. What about her? Where'd you get Grimwa? She belonged to a traveling reptile show. She was being terribly mistreated, so I offered to buy her. She's named after a spirit guide I had once. The spirit Grimwa was a very powerful female snake priestess in Egyptian times. Grimwa doesn't sound Egyptian. I only know the spirits tell me. Monsieur, I am sure they know better than we. How'd you learn to handle Grimwa? I told you a great voodoo queen taught me. She learned from Marie Laveau herself. Oh, fascinating. Would you consider giving me one of Grimwa's scales? No, I couldn't do that. You might do some Grigri of your own, no? One must be very careful with such things. Hair clipping, nail pairing, and snake scales. How about showing me how you handle Grimwa? Really? You would like to see me dance, perhaps? That would be swell. I won't make you wait, Monsieur Knight. No matter what you see, do not be frightened. I'll give it my best shot. Giggle grabs the shed snake skin while Radiant is otherwise occupied. They are truly inspiring, isn't it? That's certainly one word for it. Do these symbols mean anything to you? Ah, oh, the voodoo code. It is very secret, yes. I studied it with my mentor, the great Queen Tavern. Really? Great. Can you tell me where it says? Hmm. Let's see. Well, some of it is nonsense, I'm afraid. Whoever wrote this wasn't very good. That's all right. Just tell me what it says. It starts with a D and J, and then... Okay, this part makes sense. It says, Conclave tonight, bring... Then there's more nonsense. F-W-E-T-K-A-S-H. So that last bit might mean cash. Fresh cash? It doesn't make much sense. That's okay, thanks. DJ It's a star. I'm happy I could help. Gabriel magnifies the shed skin from Margentia, Moonbeam's snake. The snake scales are hued brown. They don't match the scale from Le Pontchartrain. Well, I guess I'll be going now. The only vice is the absence of love. I've heard that. By now. Hello? Mm-hmm. Bonjour, Monsieur Walker. Oh, bienvenue, Madame Hall. Comment ça va? How do you be feeling today? Well, I tell you, Mr. Walker, I'm certain someone's buried a sleep not bag somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a week in weeks. Oh, don't that be dull. You're gonna need some easy night candles then. Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for our lady's intervention. 
Groceries are good, sure enough. But you burn those candles too, and you're gonna get any old no sleep grigri, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them round to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I think catch her at it. But I know this is the favor would stop getting powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dogs. Oh, I beg you, misery. You put nine pinheads up in a little box, add a pinch of graveyard dust, and put it under her front porch step. That'll turn the trick back on Mrs. Petiva, and she'll be the one with the belly ache. I have the pins and the dust. That's it, everyone. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame. Don't hurt to be proactive, none either. Not does it. Not so long, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame. It is nothing. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur Walker. So, this is a voodoo store, huh? Voodoo? Curio shop. Things you see here yeah, from local folklore. That is weird, I tell you, Chuck. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. That customer of yours, the little old lady. Customer? The woman I saw in here. Madame Casano, you call her. I don't talk about my customers, the men who come in off the street. Do you know anything about animal masks? Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. I used to sell a few. As souvenirs. The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. Oh, he's sort of a mascot now. Can you tell me anything else about how animal masks are used? They're curiosities, no? This year is a curio shop. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm. Maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks? You've got to be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, no? Talk with him for less. Can you tell me anything else about how animal masks are used? They're curiosities, no? This here is a curio shop. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. Would you take 50 for Willie Jr.? Don't insult me, monsieur. The price is $100. Made it back though. Oh boy, party time. Seen any good movies? I saw a great documentary last night on permanent excavations. You mean small dark places that haven't been touched in centuries? Sounds right up your alley. Well, it did help me gain a better understanding of your mind. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you know anything about Mavi Lavo? Wasn't she a big voodoo queen before the Civil War? That's right. Well, you just heard everything I know about her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Uh, I would rather not hear about your sex life, Mike. Do you have messages for me? 
Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I need you to look up a Madame Casanu. Madame Casanu? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend, Malia Getty, was? Christ. Casanu is at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see how you're fine. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. It's time to close shop. So it is. Have a nice night. You too. See you tomorrow. I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mm. I also checked out Kazanu. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Great, thanks. Now, are you going to tell me what happened yesterday with Malia Getty, or is it just too embarrassing? Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. By the star at tonight. Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. Huh. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Wow, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Hey, kids. Bruno. How nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours? Hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. 
Stay out of this, Christ. Ooh, you're serious? You'll let me have it? Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My fares are so tied up. Gabriel, a hundred dollars for your father's painting? Grace, let me deal with this. Fine, it's yours. Gabriel! Here, here's the hundred. You'd better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display, though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. I can't believe I actually got it. Just wait until I show Sid. I don't believe you. It, it's just a painting. There are things I have to do. Hans Pickle View, dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel stands over an uninteresting front. Under the cultural event section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. Back up. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Witter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Riddle? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Do you have more messages for me? I've given everything to you. Here's that phone number. Thanks. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up. Somewhere there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. Hello. Hi. Is this the Kazanu residence? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you or does anyone in your family patronize the Dixieland drugstore? I'm a busy man. What are you selling? Nothing. Good. Goodbye. Hello? I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. <laughs> Castro, be quiet. Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about.
Agent Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you have a Madame Kazonu as a client? Madame Kazonu? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Um, uh, yes, but I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggie? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. The number written on the note is four nine zero nine three two four three 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 three. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had senses, uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until these dreams started, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes. Heinz was my brother. There's much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our line. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. I'm going out. Don't hurry back on my account. Hi. Uh-huh. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Are you still interested in selling that crocodile mask? Well, you show me a hundred dollars, and the mask is yours. I have a hundred dollars. You still want to sell that crocodile mask? That's a hundred dollars, sure enough. The mask? It's yours, sir. Here you go. Careful it don't bite you now. Yeah, thanks. Don't you go forgetting your leggy out. A free bottle of master gambling oil. The sign said I could get Lady Luck oil instead. 
Well, I wasn't thinking a man as young as you would be needing that kind of remedy. But if you're having problems with your teeth... Oh, that's all right. Believe me, I don't need it. I'll just stick with this. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> of course, it ain't none of my business if you do need it. I don't need it. Of course you don't. How's it going today? What? Oh, it's only you. Man, I have been jumpy all day. That that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. There's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it, and good luck. Madame Lorelei, the fortune teller, is garbed in a belly dancer's outfit and wears a boa around her neck. A real boa. Come on, boys. Hoopla! I'm looking, I'm looking. Gabriel leers at the dancer, but she seems to want a more overt demonstration of his appreciation. Not a bad idea. Madame Laura Light reached nearly at the gate and quickly started. Yep, she wants me. Jackson Square. It's a silken veil. The veil belongs to the fortune teller. It's covered with shiny iridescent sequins. The man Gabriel examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale. Yes. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. I think this veil belongs to you. Huh, my veil? I'm always losing those things. <laughs> <laughs> 
You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady. Delicate and so handsome as well. Will I? And since you have such a clear interest in fortune telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm. Strong. Yes, and yet so delicate and uh, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel knowingly. She is a dangerous woman. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life falling. And very soon. <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? No. Oh, oh God! Beware! Beware! What is it about me lately? Gabriel has a scale from the fortune teller's boa. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontetrain. The reconstructed Vebe was done for Gabriel by a technical artist. Lucy, uh -huh. Really? I forgot you were gone. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I have a pattern I need you to research. How interesting. What is it? It's a reconstruction of the tracings they found around the murder victims. The ones done in flour and blood. Ugh! You shouldn't carry this kind of thing around. Who knows what these symbols mean? Well, wear your evil vanishing gloves if you want. But check it out for me, would you? I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. See you later. Uh-huh. Give me back my badge. Now, Knight! Sure. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Yeah? You borrow it again in your history. <laughs> About today. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? Calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us for 
poor mostly helping us bust small time pimps and dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning to Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective Instinct. Detective Instinct. Got it. Alright, Crash. I want to hear about these murders. You been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? I don't know nothing. I told you. Come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look. I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Hey, you relax. No one knows you're here. The men who picked you up were plain clothes. Man. Plain clothes? Like you could fool them. <laughs> they know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murder? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. You tell me what I want to hear, and maybe I can get you in the witness protection program. But you have to earn it. Witness protection? Are you crazy? Don't let me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here! Come on, who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the army? By now they know I'm here. It's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. I can send a message. Tell them I didn't say nothing. Crash, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detain, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true serve. Damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! You'd only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. Yeah, for the book, I mean. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what do you call that? Fiction. That's it. it certainly is. I'll see what I can do. I'm going to hit the road. Ciao, baby. The right family pool. Several of Gabriel and Grant's family members are laid to rest here. Malia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else... Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for? I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look. I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. 
Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's on Bourbon. I know. See? I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come back tonight. Please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it! The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled, get it. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. Two heavy, solid marble doors provide an entrance to the tomb. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. This old tomb has a sword carved into the stone below the name of the deceased. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Vudun is the tribal religion of Africa. The name Vudun is actually a banner heading under which resides the entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Vudun may sound funny to you. What is known in the States as Vudun is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Vudun and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of Africa have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific pasts or places. Some represent important tribal leaders in their life. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. One tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. In this way, many of the voodoo cults spread, mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the Voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices. Animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sea. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the Voodoo know how to as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And no, I said primal, not primitive. There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. This is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the Loa is the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a Loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. 
Some of the older, original graphical lore include the Mama, the Great Serpent God, his roof, the Mistress of Love, Mother Mabel, or Gede, the Lord of Death, Akwe, the Spirit of Water, Lake, Spirit of the Crossroads, and the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Oh, I've got to get more sleep at night. Uh, the tribe-specific lore can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped lore. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the lore of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Houndfors. Their priests, Hung or Gokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a voodoo and hound form, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a poto -mita. The ritual circle is prepared with a bele, a pattern of symbols. In each tribe's bele is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special pole. During ritual conclaves, the initiates dance under the supervision of a vocal and a mama lore, a hidden priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual board or asom, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The Ritual Whip, or Fwet Gash. And the Ritual Coffin, or Seke Madule. These items are often optional, called for by the Mama Loa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the local knows his power is limited. Mama Lord is the supreme woman. She works on butterflies. Oh, butterflies. The firelight. No, what is it? Gabriel? Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel! Get in! Yeah, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. It's too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide! No! No! Let me out! Help! Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my god, sorry. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Greek night at the Alpha Psi Omega frat house. It looks like it took place sometime last spring. There's a door on one side of the stage. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight, Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Dr. Hartridge's office is crowded with masks, carved figures, and strange objects. That mask is quite hideous. The carved stone head looks African and very old. It's an enormous stone head. The squatter grins maliciously at Gabriel. Dr. Hartridge's sharp eyed and even sharper tongue. When he condescends to look at Gabriel at all, 
it with a dismissive glare. Exotic fish lend even more color to the cluttered office. Your lecture was terrific. Oh, you think so? You were snoring so loud I didn't think you'd heard it. And if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight, I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Uh, no. Fine. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I've read about them in the papers. I must admit to some interest. But according to the newspapers, the voodoo aspect is fake, so I haven't really pursued it. You know, Americans, and especially Hollywood, treats voodoo. I'm sure there are many so-called practitioners out there that have no idea what they're doing or the power they're playing with. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. But I know all I care to about reptiles. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. The June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. Do you have any idea what Caprice girl means? Caprice en corps. Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French. And literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in Wudun are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of Houdoun somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true Houdoun practices. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks, totems, are used extensively in most African Vodun religions. Tell me about Bebes. If you'd taken notes during my lecture, you wouldn't have to ask. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? I'm afraid I can't help you there, Mr. Knight. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's, uh, very rare. Most Houdoum practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that's the God's demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Akamina. 
Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the lower will simply take it for themselves. Tell me more about human sacrifice. I wouldn't dwell on it. Most Wudun sects probably haven't seen a human sacrifice for several generations. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating lady. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, so, that's why I want to copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the Vede represents something. Lower, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Why are they wrong? You think this Vede is authentic, then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Hmm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph. Except for the corpse, of course. With the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Remind me of certain black voodoo practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand? Really? Interesting. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Oh, do keep in touch. Gabriel stands at the door of an old French Quarter residence. The neighborhood is a little shabby, but this particular building is freshly painted. The door frame is a beautiful example of traditional New Orleans architecture. Yes? Who is it? Ah. I'm doing an article on voodoo, and I heard that you... I am a good Catholic young man. Take your evil influence elsewhere. But I just have a few questions. I can feel the evil eye. Go away. I have some fine magazine subscriptions for sale. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. I've got some great pet supplies. Could you, could you cool it, old doggy? <laughs> Castro has everything he needs. Don't you, Castro? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Castro. 
land shark. You have no Bean Murray. Wrong house, never mind. Fine. Good day. San Luis Cathedral has a beautiful chapel, warm with tones of gold and cream and rich with delicate frescoes and meticulously carved wood. The chancel of San Luis Cathedral consists of a raised dais, an altar, two pedestals, and a choir area. Flags of the world are displayed from the upper story. A promotion of the Universal Harmony Nuka. Eh, at least the cherubs are an aesthetic way of asking for donations. The small nook must be used as a ready room for the parish priest. It's small, cool, and has a faintly institutional feel. A freshly starched black priest's shirt stands out against the white robes in the closet. I can't resist black. The vase adds a nice touch. There's a box of white creases collars in the closet. I love my hair. Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. The closet shelves are stacked with the odds and ends of a saintly light. In other words, nothing Gabriel is familiar with. Appropriately sacred books are laid out on the table. It's a picture of Christ. A crucifix adorns the wall. Gabriel is carrying a priest's shirt and collar which. Ah, surprise, surprise! Do not belong to him. All right, but this is private. Is this convincing enough? It's Father McLaughlin to see you. Well, Father, you should be ashamed of yourself being so ill-groomed. I am sure the bishop would never approve. You can just go get a haircut before you come calling on me again. I know my duty, Father, but a priest seeking contributions should take pains to represent the church 
with respect. The jar contains frou-frou hair gel. The things I do for my art. Yes? Who is it? It's Father McLaughlin to see you. I see you've taken my advice, Father. I didn't mean to be harsh, but the church is the church. Well, when you're right, you're right. Exactly. Come in, Father. Please be seated, Father. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Madame's parlor is full of carefully dusted and polished relics of her past. Madame seems to light candles. Gabriel wonders if these two are specialties of Mr. Walker's shop. There's an old-fashioned jewelry box on the coffee table. It's so nice of you to invite me in. Ah, but no, Mopé. I am always happy to see one of their good fathers. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, Mopé. Tell me about yourself. Me? I am Creole. My family has been in New Orleans for over 200 years. Real New Orleans are French, you see. These days the city is overrun with people with no heritage at all. No offense, Father. But it's true. But the French, Nathanmont, will always be the true blood of New Orleans. Tell me about yourself. Well, Father. I don't know what else to say. What can you tell me about voodoo? Ah, uh, people think I'm just a foolish old woman. But I know the things they do. My family's been in New Orleans since 1750. So I know more than most. Voodoo people are all over the city. In the shops. Everywhere. They curse you like that. But most people even notice. Spit on your bread at the bakery. Take strands of your hair at the store when you try on the clothes. You have to be so careful. But I know their ways, so I can protect myself. I know how to use the magic too, and I can counteract their evil spells. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Voodoo murders? Ha! They are nothing new to me, Father. They have known the time. I hardly go out anymore. It's too dangerous in the streets. They can get you anywhere, you know. Even here in this room. But I try not to let them know about me. That's the best way. What can you tell me about New Orleans? The only true New Orleans are of French origin. My family were among the original settlers of New Orleans. They came here from France. The Creole society used to be so gay in New Orleans. Now it barely hangs on by its fingernails. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? They're evil creatures. Did you know that evil people can send them into your dreams? They can't. That's why I never sleep. Right, thanks. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? May we? I used to love the St. John's Eve Mass at St. Louis Cathedral. Of course, it is also a night of great wickedness. Worse than all Hallows Eve. They will corrupt anything for them. They? They who? Oh, you know. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, her? I know that 
you are about her. You do queen. Ah, my great grandmother was an acolyte of Marie Lavo. She knew the truth about her. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. No, no, I won't say anything more. Not to you, Father. She will be well, but you are an outsider. Do you know anything about animal masks? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about Veves? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Oh yes, father. It is the wickedest kind. The kind they practice here in New Orleans. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Cor means? <laughs> no, me. I know. I bet you do not, father. Nesma. It means goat without horns. Oh, father, you surprise me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by goat without horns. 